The Ottoman Empire was exceptional in a myriad of different aspects. Throughout the entirety of its abnormally long existence, this empire was ruled by one single dynasty. Spanning on three continents, this Turkish behemoth nearly revived the glory and prosperity the Muslim world enjoyed during the Islamic Golden Age. Nailing the final nail in the coffin of what was left of the Roman Empire, the Ottomans would go on to subjugate the entirety of southeastern Europe and later a significant portion of the Middle East and North Africa. Without doubt, this empire played a major role in shaping world history. So, how much would be changed if it never existed in the first place. What would the world look like without the Ottoman Empire? At its peak, the empire of the Ottomans instilled fear in nearly every Christian monarch on the old continent. It may sound surprising that this intimidating Islamic superpower traces its origins to an unassuming 15th century Anatolian principality. It is during this period that the famous founder of the Ottoman dynasty, Osman, would expand his influence, starting from the small village of Siugut and eventually coming to rule over a significant chunk of land in Western Asia Minor. Osman's successes would forestart a policy of aggressive conquest which would eventually give rise to the massive Oriental Empire most of us associate with the Ottomans. To guarantee the removal of the Ottoman Empire, we'll have to go further back in time to Osman's father, Ertugru. Reliable sources on Osman's life are nearly non-existent, let alone on his father's. According to most, however, Ertugru was a leader of the August Turkic Kai tribe, which entered the service of the powerful Anatolian Sultanate of Rum. After being successful in raiding the weakened Byzantine Empire, Ertugru would be rewarded with the governorship of a small town he conquered named Sugyut. The isolated area around this village and its proximity to Christian lands would later enable Osman to expand into the neglected Anatolian provinces of the rapidly declining Eastern Roman Empire. Going back in time, the Sultanate of Rum would suffer a severe blow from the Mongol Empire, following which its Sultan, Caicos Ro II, would become a mere Mongol vassal. Many Turkish tribes would try to escape Mongol hegemony by migrating westwards, and the region around the town of Sugyut would prove to be a perfect place for refuge. And thus many Turkish tribes would join Ertugru, eventually becoming the backbone of the early Ottoman army. All of that could have been changed quite easily. By preventing Ertugru from serving the Sultan of Rum, we can remove the Ottoman Empire from this timeline altogether. And so, without the predecessors of the Ottomans providing refuge to many other Turkic tribes and constantly raiding Byzantine lands, the Roman emperors of Constantinople deal with the Turkish attempts of conquering what was left of their Anatolian holdings. The lands which were in our timeline conquered by the Ottoman and other Western Beyliks remain in Byzantine hands. With the collapse of the Sultanate of Rum in the early 14th century, the Turkish state of the Karamanids becomes the dominant principality in the region. To the north, another powerful kingdom known as Eretna would become the major contester of the Karamanids. However, Eretna, which was established by a former Uyghur Mongol general, fractured shortly after the death of its founder. That would still occur in our alternative timeline, leading to the Principality of Karaman coming to dominate the entirety of Eastern Anatolia. This domination, however, would be a short-lived one. In the late 14th century, a Central Asian warlord named Timur would conquer all of Persia. In our universe, he defeated the very competent Ottoman Sultan Bayezid II at the Battle of Ankara, and he would likely wipe out or significantly weaken the much smaller Karamanid Beylik in this alternative timeline. Now let's explore what would be happening in the Balkans during this time. The Byzantine Empire would still be shaken by civil wars which would enable the Serbian king Stefan Dusan to conquer central Greece and establish the Empire of Serbia. In our timeline, this empire collapsed after the son and successor of Stefan Dusan, Stefan Uroš, lost a major battle to the Ottomans and died soon afterwards without leaving a successor. Following which Serbia would fracture, making a future Ottoman conquest inevitable. The Serbian Empire had been declining before the arrival of the Ottomans, however, and so in a world without an Ottoman Empire, Serbia endures as an independent kingdom but eventually loses control of central Greece and Macedonia to the Romans. Serbia's neighbor, the Second Bulgarian Empire, was also a shadow of its former self, suffering from inner division as well. And so with weakened Slavic kingdoms to the north and a declining Karamanid Beylik to the east, the emperors of Constantinople embarked on a gradual reconquest, eventually regaining full control over Anatolia and Greece by the early 16th century. Serbia and Bulgaria would likely enter a dynastic union to prevent their future incorporation into Byzantium. Attempts to unite the two kingdoms had been made in our timeline as well, especially during the reign of the previous 
previously mentioned Stefan Dushan. With the absence of the powerful Ottoman Empire, another Muslim state would become a hegemon in the Middle East. In the 16th century, a nobleman of mixed Turkic-Kurdish origin, Ismail, would unite the Persian Empire with the help of nomadic armies, founding the so-called Safavid Empire. In real history, Ismail would begin expanding his realm in all directions, conquering Mesopotamia and later fixing his eyes on the Ottomans, who would ultimately defeat his armies, halting further Persian expansion and later even stripping Mesopotamia from Safavid control. Without the Ottomans, the Persians will continue expanding, likely eventually conquering Egypt, Syria and the Hejaz from the weakened Mamluk dynasty. This would cause many changes in the region as the Safavids were radical followers of the Shia sect of Islam and would likely try to impose Shiism on the predominantly Sunni population which they would come to control. The resurgent Byzantines and Persians would clash in numerous wars over control of Syria and Eastern Anatolia. The Black Sea would be eventually colonized by the Eastern Romans, leading to future confrontations with the Poles and the Russians. Now let's quickly go through the major changes in European history in this timeline. Hungary will still likely collapse due to severe decentralization and pressure from the immensely powerful Habsburg dynasty. The attempts of the Hungarian crown to unify Poland, Hungary and Lithuania will still fail due to lack of support from the independent-minded Hungarian nobility. And first, the Austrian Habsburgs would still consolidate control over Hungary. Eastern trade would still be limited for the Europeans as the Safavids come to rule Egypt. First, the search for alternative routes to the Indian Ocean will still lead to the discovery of the Americas by the Spanish. Speaking of the Spanish, the absence of the Ottomans will enable the Habsburgs to conquer Tunisia, first making them even more powerful in this timeline. With the collapse of Safavid Persia in the 18th century, the Eastern Romans would come to conquer Syria and Egypt, and so the Spanish and the Eastern Romans would begin to vie for dominance over the Mediterranean. This summarizes what would happen in a timeline where the Ottoman Empire never rises. All of these predictions are of course speculations at best, as no one knows for sure what would have occurred in a timeline with such a large of a change. Thank you for watching and special thanks to my patrons, Mampir and Troy Tempest. This has been Bulgarian Empire Mapping and I'll see you in the next one.